So welcome to Curiosity, Creativity and Beyond. Today we're going to learn how to draw this amazing beetle. This is a five horned rhinoceros beetle. And the first thing I notice is his size is a male rhinoceros. And I know that because it has all these horns. Look at the size of my hand and look at the size of this beetle. Let's measure it right away from the bottom until the very, very, very tip of the horn is almost eight centimeters tall and it is three centimeters wide. That is just incredible and it's so shiny. So today I'm going to use um, a non-photo blue pencil. Any blue will do. I'm also going to use a 2B pencil, which I particularly like because the lines are not very dark. They don't scratch the paper and they don't smudge a lot. I also have an eraser and I also have a ruler and a sharpener. The sharpener is right here. The beetle is almost as big as my sharpener. That is crazy, crazy fun. The beetle is preserved and uh, is secured by these pins, one in the center and, one, uh, and two on the side. And uh, I'm going to start, actually, the first thing I notice is that the overall shape of the beetle is quite like an oval. Let's see if I can make an oval. I have to leave some room for the horn here. So I think, yeah, it's kind of an oval. And ovals are just circles that we have stretched. And it takes a little bit of time to make a nice oval. The next thing I notice is that there's like two very different parts. One is here at the front and it's this shiny, shiny, dark brown black. And then there's like a line here. And then look at this shiny, shiny, almost like golden color or um, golden green. It has so many, many different colors there. And that's a very nice reflection there and it's divided in two. So definitely it doesn't look like this oval is actually divided right in the middle. I would say this oval is going to be divided a little bit higher around here. And at this point, I'm just making placeholders with this non photo blue pencil so we can actually uh, have a basic blueprint of what we want to draw before we actually go into the graphite. The next thing I'm going to draw is I'm going to divide, as you can see, there's a very distinctive line that divides this, uh, that divides this other half. And we're going to get to know what is that called and why does that exist over there? And this line joins this in a kind of a funny shape that looks like a triangle to me. So, so far, these are kind of the main divisions that we're going to do into our oval. I'm going to move these out of the side so it's clear. And the next thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to start placing where all these other structures are going to come from and to. Um, it's interesting to know the different parts of the beetle because this is called the prothorax and I'm going to write it down. So that is the prothorax. This horn here comes from the head and the head is right there. So that's going to be right here. This is called the abdomen. And underneath the prothorax is the thorax. 
and all the legs, the six legs, are going to come from it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw where all these horns would come from. Um, I can see it's kind of symmetrical. Uh, if you divide this beetle, if you put this pencil here, you can see that this half is very similar to this half. And that is called symmetry. Sometimes symmetry is like this, but in this case, the symmetry is like this. So if I, that means that if I draw one half, I will draw the other half. So that's a trick. Animals that are symmetrical, you can draw half and then draw the other half. So let's just focus on one half of this amazing beetle. Because I see there's two horns on each side. So let's do those, shall we? One is going to be around here. And the other one is going to come around here. So I'm going to do the same thing here. One horn here. And one horn here. I'm going to switch. Uh, well, I'm going to add the other horn here first. It's going to be right in the middle. And this horn is arch. If we were to see this beetle from the side, look how arch that horn is. But because we're drawing it from the top, it looks like it's just one um, single spear. But as you can see, I'll show you again. Do you see that amazing curve on the horn? So let's place him there and let's continue. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing this part here, all these very interesting things. And I notice that this horn, it doesn't end very pointy. It ends on a tiny curve and then it has like two parts, one and two. But everything is curvy and is definitely thicker as it joins the rest of this almost helmet looking structure. It reminds me of as if Darth Vader had horns in his helmet, almost. So there we go. We have one horn right there. If I want to draw this horn. I'm going to do that same thing here. And the reason why I'm drawing the horns first is so I don't have to erase any of the structures underneath. And do you see how this horn is almost fused with this helmet-like structure? Well, we can just suggest it by making the lines at the bottom a little bit curvier. That's our second horn right there. If we wanted to make the exact same drawing, we absolutely can. I see that they're very, very similar. If this beetle had had like a fight, because that's why they use those horns for, uh, maybe it would have had like a, maybe a dent or, um, or a little um, break or a crack. So I need to be very observant to see whether they're absolutely symmetrical or whether there's been some sort of sign of battle that makes them a little bit not quite the same. We have another horn there and then a final horn over there and it's exactly the same as this. It has a little bit of a curvy end and as I am learning, as I am observing it, it thickens as it joins the rest of this helmet, which, by the way, it's called the head capsule. It sounds very, very spaceship. 
head capsule. And then the thing I need to make sure is that the head capsule, as I observe, I'm going to draw the rest of it. It has like a very nice curve here. And then around here, it has like two little mountains, one here and one here. But apart from that, there we go. It's very important to take your time to observe all these structures because we use our blueprint as a guide but now with our graphite pencil is when we are actually doing the real real drawing I might move this a little bit there we go then I can see that at the very very top this capsule continues and it's funny because it ends on kind of a, a curve over there because as I said these horns belong to the head capsule or prothorax but this main horn is attached to the head and the head is underneath so because of that our horn is going to come from underneath and we're going to actually draw this horn we're going to cheat the perspective a little bit and let's make sure that at least we can draw and see our little tip of the horn right there and actually I think you can see that a little bit you see if I move it a little bit like that you can see the tip if I move it a little bit like that you can see the tip so it's a matter of perspective we're doing an apical view top view apical or top view so let's continue because this is on top. I can see that line because this is on top. These two merge and these two horns are also merged right there. Then there's like a space. It's a space between the prothorax or head capsule and this rest of the beetle, which is the abdomen. And there's a little gap. So I want to make sure that I observe very well that there is also a gap there. And then there's this structure like that we found before that looks like a heart or a triangle with very round corners. That has a name and that has a very, very amazing name. It's called the Scutellum. We're going to put all these names afterwards properly, but now I wanted just to mention it. And we can see that there, there's a central line dividing this structure. And then at the very bottom, there's interesting if I tilt this a little bit so you can see it it ends on kind of a hard shape but very very ever so slightly there we go we have that I'm going to use the eraser a little bit so I can make this a little bit clearer this structure ends like this and then there is another little piece there that is only visible if we lift a little bit. So we are going to try to include that as well. And then this structure here, it bends in a little bit there and it's wider 
is wider than the prothorax, that the capsule is a little bit wider. So let's make sure we reflect that. It's a little bit wider. And then there's a curve, curvy line that is going to join this side with this side. As I see it here, I realize I'm not giving it the right shape. I think now as I am observing that this is more of a straight line and that's why it's good to have an eraser and to observe twice because it's kind of more hmm it starts curving right about here oh that's right so I was eating a bunch of it just by making the curve a little bit earlier so it's a good idea to always, always double check. There we go. I feel much more happier now with this shape. Let's try to make it over there. We said this line continues here and goes a little bit beyond this head structure. And then there is a line that it goes straight not obeying my blueprint I'm using just as a reference and it starts curving around around here I think actually I need to elongate my um, my beetle a little bit because it's getting a little bit short so uh, one one trick could be before erasing Let's make sure that we make him a little bit longer. Yeah, he got a little bit short. And then we can just copy those structures here. So now I can come here and do the exact same thing. And one thing here. And now I can go with my eraser and erase without any guilt or shame. We made adjustments to our drawing as we go. There we go. So let's me, let me go back and add this structure here and how it opens right there and then And you end with a lot of lines. So let's make sure that we just have one main line. That's our friend line. <laughs> so we don't have too many. There we go. So now we have a little bit of a more um, accurate uh, beetle. We added him a little bit of length because as we were observing the real specimen, we had to make adjustments and that's absolutely fine. That's what observation and drawing nature is about. We make all these corrections and adjustments. So as we said before, even though the legs look like they come from this part, the abdomen, actually they come from the thorax. They all come from around here. It's just that we don't see that piece that links these with the thorax. So we're just going to draw what we see. So I really like legs, uh, insect legs. And this one, for example, this uh, specimen in particular, he's missing a little bit of the last piece of the leg here, a little bit here, here and here, but the hind legs are intact. And I really, really, really like uh, insect legs. So we're going to actually draw them here. I'm going to draw this leg and it comes around here. But as I said, this is joining the thorax underneath. So just so you know that the leg doesn't come right, right there. What we see here, this little piece that we see here, that's the femur. And the femur is long. It's like our uh, leg. Uh, we also have a femur in, in, our, um, in our legs, in the upper part of your leg. 
after the femur, the next structure, and I see it here, is like a triangle with a little bit of a curvy end here. That is, is it the same length? I think it should be a little bit longer. I think it should be, yeah, a little bit longer. And it's like a triangle with three anchor points and three edges, one short and two long. And you, do you see those two little things that are poking out? Let's draw them there as well. They look like tiny horns. One and two. They look like tiny, tiny, tiny horns. And those are called tibial spurs. I'm going to curve them a little bit more. There we go, tibial spurs. And I see them also here and in all the other tibia that I see on the scarab, on this beetle. The next, the next segment, let's see, I can see also there's another scar, another, there's one here and one here too, yeah. I can see at least one, two, three, four, four tibial spurs. That's so cool. The next segment, the next segment is a tarsi, is the foot. So everything that comes up to here is the foot. And as you can see, it's formed from different segments. I count here, I can see it as well. One, two, three, and then a fourth one that is longer. So let's make them, shall we? Shall we change to the blue so make it easier? Okay, let's do that. This one is curved and this one has an angle. Maybe this was broken, but I'm just going to draw what I see. So I see one, the one, the first piece goes that way and the second piece goes that way. So now with my graphite pencil, I can go and draw all these little pieces that are like triangles with very round edges. So that would be my first, and each piece is called a tarsus. So that's the first part. I have then my second tarsus. It's again, it's like a triangle with round edges. And the third, one, two, three, And then the last one is very long, is the longest. So I'm also going to draw a triangle, but that one is longer, it's the longest. So first, second, third, and then this one, the fourth is the longest. And it's so interesting when I look at it from all angles, I see that it ends in like what looks like two big nails. It's like a bird's claw. It's like two big claws coming from each side. And luckily for us, that's what they're called. They're claws. They are curvy and pointy. It has two on each uh, tarsus. I also see that it has a lot of hair. It has hair. Oh my, he's hairy. He has a lot of hair everywhere. So I want to make sure I add those tiny hairs around here, the tibia. And oh my, here around the tibia spurs. But yeah, most I see a long hair there. So this was how this leg ended and probably because of preservation, that's why it's angled this way. I think this one looks more like it would be in nature. So I want to make sure I draw that as well. I'm going to start by drawing the femur again 
it's underneath and it's longer like the one in our upper leg and then I have the tibia and it's a triangle that is curvy and from this angle I can see very well how curvy it is here on this end it also has these tibial spurs in this case one is on top of the other just because of perspective here we could see them almost on the same plane and here we see them one on top of the other and also I need to make sure that I observe this well because they are curving this way and that way there we go here at the very front I have another little spur and then I see there is a long line that is curvy and now I have my amazing tibia on this hind leg and then let's change to the blue so I can make a nice curve as you can see here it curves very nicely that's why I think this got broken or um, altered during preservation but it's just a theory I wonder maybe you know what maybe it was like this because he had a fight and it never healed properly so we will never know so let's make our three tarses three tiny triangles with curvy edges like tiny almost look like gnome hats one two and I like to leave this one here a little bit open so I can insert the next one and three maybe it became too long but that's okay I forgive myself and then the last one that is a little bit longer and also a little bit thicker at the end And finally, these two parrot-like claws. Oh my. So he can climb up the trees and do all the things and go all the places that he wants to go. And I can see the little hairs. There's also some hairs here. One here. We're not going to draw every single hair, but it's important that we put it because I'm sure it has a function. Some of these come in bundles. I can see it there. I wonder what these hairs are for. Does he have to brush his hairs every day before he goes, he goes out? I have no idea. I'm just erasing a little bit so we can see the there we go so now we have our hind legs we have this other set of legs and as I said we can only see because of preservation we can only see up to the uh, tibia but that doesn't mean that we cannot draw them so let's do them shall we I'm gonna switch to the blue and this one comes approximately out of here that's our femur again and then our tibia this one has interesting spurs and eh? those are amazing I don't know if you see those but they are much more prominent and numerous than the ones in the hind legs so I want to make sure that I don't forget about them but first I'm gonna make the big shape which is more yeah it's more like a square ish and now I will make sure that this is one spur here one spur here and one tiny one here 
So now with my graphite pencil and very carefully I look and observe how this is a curve and how my tibia actually is in front of this femur thing and then there's like a curve here that goes right under um, this head capsule into the thorax. All the legs are going to insert in the thorax. And then I have one spur here. And it's interesting because this spur, it continues on a ridge. And this ridge continues inside the tibia. So that creates a very nice opportunity for us to draw and later add some cool highlights. There's another one here. And also this one continues. It's like interesting. It's like actually now that I look at my pencil, it reminds me of this pencil. Do you see that it has all these faces, all these different sides? It reminds me of that. It looks as if it has different flat faces. So it's not a cylinder. Then this one here. And then that's all I can see. I can see that this fracture there. So I am going to draw what I see. And then I'm going to draw this leg right here in the middle. Now I'm going to switch to my non photo blue pencil. I have, I have, uh, I can see very well the, the femur there, the touches there. And then I can see my tibia going there and a triangle. It's more like a triangle. So I wonder, so. Hmm, could it be that the tibia at the front legs is more faceted, which means that it has more facets and is much less triangular in shape than the other two legs? I don't know. I wonder. I just wonder at this point. I can see also that it has some ridges. And those are things that actually I can see in the hind leg too. A little bit of a ridge there. And then another ridge, but I definitely see them there. One, two, and then yeah, this spur right there. I can see also two more spurs, tinier, but they're right there. And then I can see how this tibia curves and inserts right into the femur and I see at least two tarsus or one yeah one and a half of a tarsus right there so I'm just gonna draw what I see remember the tarsus was just a triangle and that's it and it is cut that's the end of what I can see so I'm going to move the page a little bit towards the screen left, very gently. So we have more room to draw the legs here. And I know I have written some text, so I'm going to erase it. So we have a little bit of room. And later, once I finish the drawing, I will add all these labels again. But I just want to have a little bit of room uh, to add these legs. As with the legs on this uh, side, they are also not complete. So I am going to draw what I see. I see the femur in this part is seen around here. Ah, there's a little bit of a gap. So I make sure that I can see that gap. And then I see as in here that this is almost, almost a rectangle 
Now I'm going to switch to my graphite. You know, one thing to orient yourself and see, oh, I don't know if the leg is like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. You can very gently put the pencil on top and see, oh, ah, yes, like that. And now I move into the page. Ah, it needs to be like that. And with practice and experience, you will not need to do that. But let's do that together. Put it like this and then move it there. Yes, that's our right angle. Let's do the same with that one, okay? We have our femur right here. And let's put our pencil there. And yeah, that's the right angle. Let's move it here. Let's put it on the page. Yeah, that's going to be our angle. So I'm going to make sure my triangular fibula, tibia, is there. Let's see again. Uh, yes, that's it. I'll move it here. There we go. A little bit more angle. Now I'm going to switch to my graphite pencil and I'm going to complete these. Um, all these bits and pieces and I can see how the tibia is inserted in front of the femur right there and has a nice line there and this one is the one that has the spikes all these spurs one two and three one is tiny right here and the other ones are closer together and they're a little bit bigger. So I can see also there's a tiny break here, but I don't want to miss the chance to just draw what I see. One, two, and the exact same thing happens. This line continues inside the structure, which is going to create awesome, awesome opportunities for us to add cool, cool highlights. And then the tiny one here. Yeah, this also continues there. There we go. One. So that's our front leg on the right side. Let's do that one, the one that we have left. Oh, I forgot a little bit of the femur here. <laughs> there we go. And now, does it have hair? I don't see any, any hair on the front legs. And that's something, it's catching my eye. So I wonder why does it have hair only? Oh, it has a little bit of hair also in the mid middle ones, right near the ridges. So why? I wonder why does it have hair only on the middle and hind legs? I have no idea, but I wonder, could it be? I don't know. I'm going to just think out loud. Potential ideas could it be because maybe if he had hair in the front legs it would be i don't know it would get messy and dirty and he wouldn't be able to attack other beetles or move around um maybe it's easier to clean the hind legs i have no idea here I can see one, two, three, and four spurs, two on the front and two on the back. Yeah, I have no idea, but they are definitely, unless maybe this specimen only has preserve uh, the hair on these particular ones but it's so so different even the the texture and the shape is a little bit different on the front legs so now i have a very basic drawing of my beetle 
So I think I'm going to start overall. Um, I think I'm going to start with just uh, just a regular light brown because I think. Let's see if I can find a brown. Yes. So instead of holding my pencil like this, I am going to hold my pencil like this. Actually, I am going to um, make sure that I leave some very, very, very interesting highlights without coloring them. For example, this here and here and here. So I'm just going to start adding a little bit of color. And this is a very interesting, um, very shiny beetle, very shiny beetle. So I'm going to remember to leave an area here, empty of color here, here and here and here. So I'm just going to remember to not add color in those areas. And some have a little bit of blue in it, but it doesn't matter. I think I think I'll be fine. Just want to remember because it's so shiny that I want to remember. And I'm going to hold my pencil a little bit like this. So I create uniform textures. And I'm going to use the exact same color. But I'm going to start very light and then as I add more pressure, I can start creating areas of light and shadow. But as of now, I'm just going to apply a very uniform, uh, even there's an area here that I should leave empty. Now I'm going to switch back to holding the pencil like this because then I can get much better um, control because there's some areas here that I don't want to color. So I have a little bit of an overall brown. The legs are also interesting. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I leave a little bit a highlight there. You're thinking ahead now. You're thinking uh, that area is going to be lighter. So I'm just going to make sure that I leave that area. And if I color it very lightly, very lightly. I actually think the shiniest bits are the head and the abdomen. The legs are shiny. But they have much more texture, so they don't have these very, very, very shiny uh, highlights. That's more here on the head and there. Look at that awesome, awesome highlight. So I'm going to also start adding a little bit of color on the legs. And I'm going to, as always, do it very, very 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 gently because I like to build areas of light and shadow and as you notice I'm leaving some areas in which I press almost to nothing and let's do the same here and the legs by all means are going to be a little bit darker than the rest because they come particularly here, 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 they're darker because they they come from underneath and as soon as they come underneath they are exposed to the same light as the as the rest. There we go. It's very lightly, very lightly. That's our first pass. Actually, you know what I noticed now that I'm looking at it that the femur has the same type of highlight and shininess as this, as the head capsule. It's the tibia and the tarsa uh, and the tarsus that are actually much. Um, they have like texture. I, I I won't touch it because it's a very delicate 
specimen, but it definitely has a lot of texture. So I'm going to continue adding a little bit of this like first layer of color to our spurs. And then this one here. I know that we're all wanting to dive into the uh, this structure here. And I'm going to tell you also the name because it's quite cool. So beetles are from the scarab family. And they belong to the order of Coleoptera. Ooh, and that's so cool that I need to write it here. Coleoptera. And what this means, every animal that belongs to this order, it means that they have sheath wings. And what this means is that they have two pairs of wings. So what we are looking at here are one of those pairs. So a pair is two, right? So one pair is two, two wings. So each of these halves is a wing. And you're going to be like, no, that's not a wing. It's super hard and doesn't look like a wing at all. And you're right. It's a hardened wing one on each side and underneath there's another pair of another two wings so these ones are hardened and the other wings underneath are soft and in order for the beetle to fly these two hardened um, wings they open and then the other wings bloop, 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 allow them to fly so here in the specimen, um, those wings are underneath, so we cannot see them. But that's what we're seeing here. So each of these halves is a wing. I know, right? It's, it's insane. It's amazing. One thing I want to add with this color brown is that you notice there's a line of brown in the middle and there's some brown there. So I want to make sure that I add a little bit of that brown. I'm just leaving a white space here and here, but this is definitely darker. And the reason is because as you can see, there's a little bit of, a, I'm going to move this a little bit to the screen so you can see it as I see it. There we go. There is a, a, a brown area here and a brown area there and more brown here. Um, I have to be very careful with these highlights because they're going to be super pretty. So I'm going to make sure that I leave a space there without any, any color. And the highlights are going to depend on the light. Depending on what I do with the light I have with me, I will see um, the highlights uh, in different places. I'm now going to go a little bit darker. And I know that I'm not only going to use brown, I'm going to use other colors, but I just wanted to make sure that I, um, that I give a little bit of a first pass of brown because when I add more color on top, it's going to be very pretty. And as you can see, there's like a brown line that goes all the way down here. And then I have a little bit of darkness here because of the shape of the of the beetle and a little bit of darkness here. After all, this beetle is shaped like a dome. It's not flat. It has a lot of volume. I'm going to start adding a little bit more of pressure and I know that it's very dark but I'm going to build it very slowly. So I'm going to start always respecting those areas 
of highlights I'm just gonna go a little bit darker always looking at my specimen and I notice that there is a little bit of darkness there so I'm going a little bit dark there and there's also a little bit of darker area there and there's a little bit of darkness there and all of the sudden by adding those we're seeing much more volume much more volume and we'll go later with a little bit of black but now as of now that's that's kind of cool there is an area here that is not as dark so i'm gonna leave it like that but then this very dark here very dark this horn has this area of dark here and all these i have to respect my areas of highlights But this, this horn has dark there and also a lot of darkness there. And this is just looking at the areas that I want to color and seeing, oh, how dark is that? Oh, I want to make it a little bit darker. And it's better than going, oh, no, I need to go lighter because now we're building up layers and layers of color and you can make also new discoveries like for example I found out that there is a very dark area there and a very light area there and I also discovered that there is like a nice dark rim but it doesn't touch the very edge so I'm gonna leave like a white oops careful like a light very light edge so I'm gonna try to add pressure right until the very end do you see that and I'm gonna start doing that here so you can see that here so there is dark and there is a rim or an edge that doesn't really have much dark and I think it's because of the shape oh there's a nice dark here and this one totally reaches the end of this uh, capsule head capsule and you know what I wonder I start I start wondering about this beetle because why does he need this very very hard shell this 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 hard capsule and why do only males have these horns could it be i don't know i wonder i wonder could it be that maybe they engage in fights and they need to use these horns to fight other beetles or maybe predators um, I'm sure um, a bird will be happy to have a beetle for breakfast but if he has horns this beetle is less breakfast I don't know I just wonder so many questions I'm just going to continue adding a little bit of darkness here and these nice highlights I really like them so I want to make sure that I don't draw any of the color there and because this I have to reach that edge I'm holding the pencil like this otherwise I would be holding the pencil like this I'm gonna try it, but it's just I don't want to get into that area and when I hold it like this it's a little bit unprecise I cannot be as as detailed with the areas that I want to leave but oh well it seems to be working I hope there's a very nice dark area there and a dark area there and look at those highlights that we're leaving isn't that amazing it's adding a total total different look to our um, amazing amazing specimen there's even a shadow here it's the shadow of the horn 
right on his own capsule. There we go. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing with the legs. Um, they were a little bit darker here. I see some highlight there. But as I said before, only the femur has these like white, white, white highlights. The other ones, it's just a matter of um, adding a little bit of color and leaving some areas very light brown. And all the details that we drew are helping us define all these areas. So now we have our leg. Let's do this leg here. Another thing that I read about beetles that is very cool is that they are master recyclers. You know, when we take the, the plastic and we separate it and the glass and we separate paper and we put it all in the different recycling bins. Well, in nature, when a tree dies or an animal dies, they decompose and beetles are very good at eating all this rotten wood. So they're very, very much um, helping the process of biodegradation, which is means literally to break down um, organic matter. So they're master recyclers, master, master, master recyclers. This one here, I'm going to leave that a little bit lighter and I'm just going to make these a little bit darker over there. And if I lose some of the hairs that I drew, that's fine because guess what? I see that the hairs are almost red, so I might actually draw them directly with the red. So I'm not going to be worried about that. And then it's funny, the little tarsus, the area that goes underneath is darker, but then the rest is kind of light. So I'm going to make sure I do that there. And the claws are very shiny. So I'm just going to leave an area that is not color because it's very shiny. Wow, our beetle is looking amazing. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And under the ridges, there's a little bit of darkness. And this particular, um, this particular beetle, the five horned rhinoceros beetle is actually found in Asia. It's not something that we can find just outside our home unless you live there. But for the rest of us, we have to look at them at the museum and at, at um, entomological collections like this one. Wow, well now I'm going to go and add a little bit of color here. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of golden color. I'm going to sharpen my my pencil there we go and yes for this one i think i'm gonna i'm gonna go like this with a pencil but i'm also respecting those areas of highlights and now i can see through the brown so in a way i'm mixing on the page all these beautiful colors and you know what color pencil or crayon whatever you have around the house is going to be awesome and make sure that you hold the page, that you press the page with the other hand so it doesn't move. Also, I need to be very careful with this specimen. I'm going to hold it like this just to ensure that I can color that. And you can rotate the page, move your page. I just can't because otherwise I would be moving the, the specimen too much. And I have to be very, very gentle and careful with it. 
So now that I added a first layer, I can go back and press a little bit harder because I see there's like a very nice yellow, darker yellow area there and there. Yeah, on the edges and here. But also, I see a little bit of green, and that's interesting. So I'm going to change to like a light green. It's a very interesting mix. I'm not going to go very, very, I'm not going to press very hard yet. I see it, maybe it's because of the light. I have no idea, but I see, I see a little bit of green here and here. And if you're not too convinced, you can go back with the yellow on top of that green. And I'm sure we'll make a nice, yeah, it makes a very nice mix. Because, yeah, I see that there's several, several tones of, of, so beautiful, so beautiful. I might even actually add a little bit of red around here, just a little bit. And here, and I don't know if it's because of the light or it's because the specimen um, that I have had these particular colors, but those are the things I'm seeing. I'm also seeing a little bit of blue and blue can be also used for shadows. So I'm just going to add a little bit of blue. Not too much because I want to make sure that that is still a very nice olive yellow color, but that adds uh, that adds that adds something interesting. And maybe I'm gonna use if I had a little bit of a a dark brown, maybe I can start by adding those lines. Yeah, very light, and then here. I think the dots, I might add them at the very, very end. Like the, 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 the icing on the cake. Yeah, I think that's going to be cool. Because I also see some dots there. That's going to be the icing on the cake. The icing on the cake on the beetle it has this very nice texture lines here. Careful, I don't get into that area. And then I'm going to go with my yellow again. It's very yellow here. And much. Yeah, I like to try different types of green and see how that comes about. Because sometimes green and yellow, they're very much cousins. They like to stand next to each other. But I'm just looking at all these beautiful, beautiful colors that I can see in front of me. That's definitely a little bit darker here. But I don't have much. Ah, there we go. Now it's much nicer to draw with. Yeah, dull pencils. Oh, it's so difficult. Sometimes it's awesome because it's exactly the kind of texture that you want. There's a lot of hair in here. But sometimes it's like, oh man, I wish I could sharpen my pencil. 
there's a lot of hair here but there's also very dark because this is right in between kind of hidden there's also darker area here and there is definitely dark here and you see we might have lost some of the brown lines but we are lucky because we can draw now with our color pencils so don't worry if you lost some of your some of your lines as you can see i'm just i'm just adding color with and lines with color pencil and then i see there's like a rim of dark brown so i I totally want to do these with my brown yeah and it starts around here and also on this side here there we go so now we're having a, a very interesting uh, yeah adding these lines is really helping so I might actually you know what I might actually Go back into here and start adding darker browns. Darker browns to the head because it's adding a lot of nice volume. So the areas that were dark now are going to be a little bit darker. Do you see that? Especially on each side of the capsule. Chun, chun, chun. That sounds like a spaceship. little horns well little <laughs> they're quite huge actually for a, for a beetle and that's something I, I definitely want to add to my drawing I want to add some labels and I want to add some things that I found out So as you can see, as you add more shadow, suddenly our beetle is starting to have not only color, but also form and volume. Now we're starting to see how this beetle actually has volume is starting to come out of the page right in front of our very, very eyes see and only just by adding layers and layers of brown and other colors and look because we left those highlights now our beetle is starting to be very shiny and that's what I wanted to try I'm gonna try with black a little bit I'm going to start adding a layer of black only on the head. Not on the body because the body is kind of brownish. And a dark blue would do very good, I would say. I think a dark blue would also work very nicely. But I have a, a black here, so but I'm being very gentle, very, very, very gentle. Darker in the dark areas and respecting our highlights as always. And suddenly our head is looking much, much more three-dimensionals and I'm going to draw with the black the lines that I have lost a little bit of dark here leaving that highlight a little bit of dark there but leaving that highlight and this is a very very complicated drawing so I'm I'm learning so much as I am drawing it. 
and always looking at my specimen right here. Which I am so lucky, so lucky to have for you. How is your beetle doing? Mine is doing very fine. I'm going to do the same thing with the legs, adding a little bit of black in the dark areas. And leaving those areas of light brown as they are. I'm just adding a little bit of black on top, definitely on the claws and here. But I like, I like to see that light brown that we created before. The femur is a little bit hidden there. And sometimes it helps if um, for you not to put the hand on top of your drawing. If you have another piece of paper, you can put it here and then put your hand. So you're not like rubbing your drawing with your hand, which is something I've been doing a little bit. So I'm just going to... I see a little bit of dark there. It's much darker. But I'm going to leave some areas of light, light brown untouched. There we go. And then this leg right here. Imagine that this had, this was a millipede. We would have to draw every single leg. What? No, I don't have patience for that. This has been a very hard job. Look at all these detail and all these legs. My goodness. Same here. And as I said before, all these hairs that are kind of very interesting, they're reddish and they're very, very interesting. I totally, totally want to want to add them. So once I finish with these black shadows on top of some areas, There we go. I'm going to go now with, hmm, because they're red. I, I don't know if you can see that, but they're kind of red. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of these hairs. They come right near by the ridges. So there, and I see some here. Oh, yes. And they are also here and definitely here. Maybe they're red because of the light. I don't know, but that's what I can see. And definitely not on the front. As I said before, I don't see a lot of hairs. I see hair. I don't see a single hair. And I am also going to add a little bit of this golden to the hairs. And there's a lot of hair here that is kind of goldeny, but it's also dark. So I wonder if I could use a little bit of the black. to draw all these little hairs. So I really like how my beetle is looking, but I would like to add some labels. So I am going to move him to the left a little bit, very carefully and gently, because there's so many things that we want to put down on our drawing, all the things that we learn. For example, that this horn that we see here is called a cephalic horn. And cephalic means head, so is our cephalic horn. Whereas these four, one, two, three, and four, these are the prothorax horns. And therefore, so I'm just going to 
label one and there's one two three and four and then these each of these 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 uh hardened wings this has a name too that is called it's a beautiful name by the way elythra and that means literally four wings so each half is an elythra isn't that amazing that 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 word is so pretty so all the things other things um this triangle here that was the escutellum and it has almost like a i don't know it looks like a heart to me that that shape i just don't want to make a line on top of the drawing and then and then if we have lost some lines let me go here because i would like to make sure that we name all the bits and pieces of the legs you can go later with the graphite and redraw all these pieces that maybe with adding color and all the hairs you lost a little bit but that that piece there was the femur this part here is the tibia and the tibia had this amazing amazing tibial spurs and i could count here four i could count three here four here like i wonder if these are also tibial spurs i'm gonna put a question here are these tibial spurs these ones here i wonder because after all these legs are incomplete i think so but it's one of those questions then all these bits and pieces all these all these that's our foot and the foot has also a funny name it's called tarsi or tarsi and each of these is a tarsus one two three and four and at the end of this tarsus those are called the tarsal claws and they're like very very pointy what are other things all the things that we need to name here hmm well the eye is underneath so we don't see it but just so you know that beetles have something called compound eye which is an eye made out of different different eyes uh many many eyes sorry so they can see very well we see a little bit of the abdomen which is underneath abdomen and definitely under this elythra we have the other second pair of wings although they're not very good flyers i have to say they're not very good at flying because they're very big <laughs> so they're not very good at flying but they try they do their best